coach okay? Obviously, there's a bit of a late swap. With the, with your yeah, yeah, no, he's he's fine. He's um, just actually having a meeting um, in at the AFL. So, um, yeah, so he's just asked me to step in at uh, late notice. Yeah, so no, everything's fine. Do we know what the meeting's about at all? Do you want to disclose that at all? Or? Oh, look, he's, uh, he's gone to meet with, um, with Adrian and um, the umpiring department, but uh, it's nothing that um, doesn't happen on a regular basis, just uh, a catch-up in regards to the games on the weekend and a um, couple of decisions that, that uh, may have occurred. But that's uh, something that I think most AFL coaches, senior coaches do from time to time. Yeah, look, you know, it, um, that, there was uh, high tackles, there were ruck, ruck infringements. We had four ruck infringements against Hamish McIntosh um, as well. So, yeah, there was a, just a couple of issues that came out of that game on the weekend that, you know, he'd like to, you know, get some clarification on. Did he speak to you about those issues after the game? Uh, look, we, we spoke as a uh, coaching group about those issues and we spoke, we've spoken to our playing group you know, especially in re relation to the head high tackles that, um, you know, as much as it was frustrating, you know, on our part, um, uh, you know, our guys need to learn to tackle with the right technique, um, that a lot of those uh, free kicks were actually there um, uh, because as some of our younger players, and if you go back through those particular tackles, most of the guys that infringed were our younger players that uh, didn't go low enough and didn't uh, didn't employ the right technique. It's two separate issues, isn't it? There's the one where you lead with your head into a contest, and the other one where they can't bring the arm up. Is that yeah, how you yeah, think? yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I think the AFL are all over the one with uh, the lead to the head, although there have has been it's been a bit topical that there's been a few of those recently. But um, yeah, it's the ones where you know perhaps they just drop at a knee and and shrug the shoulders, and the, um, all of a sudden the the tackle becomes high. Now, we gave our players an awareness going into that game that that uh, was something that's uh, crept into the game. And uh, there's a couple of you know, Eagles players that do it very well. And, uh, but our guys still didn't actually employ the technique that we actually had practiced leading into that game. So that was disappointing from our perspective. Do you think now it's time that this is kind of turning into a massive issue and there's some hysteria over it that the yeah. AFL needs to come out and just differentiate and yeah, look, I, I think the biggest thing is that uh, what it's done is, you know, through Alistair's uh, comments and Brad's comments, it's brought an awareness um, to the competition about, you know, a, a particular technique that's being employed and that, you know, the, the, the technique's there, but the good, the, um, the thing about the Eagles are that, you know, they're getting first to the ball, you know, like that's been commented on as well, you know, so we have to take that as a slide on our game that we allowed, you know, Hams and Shuey and these guys to get first to the football and then be able to employ that, the, uh, the technique of shrugging and, and uh, drawing a high tackle. We also need to um, educate our players that, um, that against certain players, you need to actually go really low, you know, lower than perhaps normal, so that they can't employ that technique. Who, who instigated that meeting? Was it, did Brad actually go to Adrian and say, I wanted to meet with you, or did Adrian say, I wanted to hear a few things up? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Mm. So, if you certain players tackle low, uh, some clubs are teaching their players to tackle high and stop the ball, stop the contest, rather than the old fashioned tackling around the waist. Yeah. So, does the club generally say let's track the ball? Well, that's that, that's the thing, you know. Like, um, you know, the game's evolved where, you know, you didn't want the ball uh, coughing out. You know, we call cough ups. You know, which you know just spills out, and the opposition can you know then get on to uh, get onto that loose football. So, you know, the we evolved and we started, you know, teaching the players to tackle with the technique of actually trying to lock the ball in, which means you actually have to quite go quite high to be able to make sure that the uh, ball doesn't escape and pop out the top. Um, now, you know, against certain players, you're going to actually have to employ a different technique to be able to go low so that they can't draw a free kick for high contact. Um, but that's what I mean, like the awareness is now there. Um, now it's a matter of you know the competition being able to identify that awareness and be able to teach your players perhaps a couple of different tackling techniques. On another issue, the uh, BFL Tribunal last time with David Wojcicki, you've obviously been involved at BFL level as well. Do you think there needs to be some? 
does it need to be the same system in AFL and VFL that kind of marry them up? Um, I think there needs to be um, a level of, uh, of consistency there. Yeah, I, um, yeah, and that's right across the board. I think you know, from a um, fixture in perspective, you know, we've got the uh, the issue issue of uh, two aligned clubs. You know, North Ballarat and Werribee, as well as you know, obviously um, the seniors. And uh, sometimes the fixture, from our perspective, is really really tough. So yeah, the uh, the VFL and the AFL, you know, it would be nice for them to get on on board uh, with one another and and have a bit of consistency about a few of those issues. Darren, when you're playing in Perth, one of the problems not so much the free kicks that the West Coast get, the ones that visiting sides don't get. Um, I think from a, a spectator perspective and a coaching perspective, um, we're more inclined to uh, perhaps put up with free kicks that are missed then free kicks are paid um, and then you miss out on a similar free kick. Um, the, again, it, it comes back to that word consistency. If there's consistency across the board, you know, you don't get anywhere near as frustrated as a, as a coach and I imagine as a, uh, as a supporter group out there supporting your team. Um, but when there's discrepancy within the decisions um, and where some are getting paid and some aren't, that's when I think the frustration comes in. I think there was a statistic earlier in the week that said that since 2000, West Coast have had 524 more free kicks than their opponents at Subiaco. Have you noticed that the crowd has become a factor at all or over there, or do you notice that they might have some sort of influence over the ups in terms of what's been paid? Yeah, you know, it's been the uh, you know, it's been a long argument um, that when you play in a state, um, you know, everyone that goes in a state, first you want to get out off to a good start. Um, uh, because that basically keeps the crowd out of it. And then once you get off to a good start, you want to maintain that so that you silence the crowd, so that then um, perhaps uh, the crowd doesn't influence anything that's actually happening on the ground. Um, from a playing perspective, that's from our play, playing perspective, as well as, I'd imagine, from an umpire perspective. Um, but that's just, uh, that's just something that you need to do. And, you know, we talked about that, you know, interstate games, you know, probably was just very similar back in the day when there were hostile environments, you know, when we used to play at the suburban grounds like Victoria Park. Well, look, this week, John, they're starting to turn things around. Yeah, they were, um, we all went Friday night, um, Bulldogs Collingwood, and um, they were really impressive. They were, their pressure was really good early. Um, a lot of their better players are going, getting back into some good form. So, um, yeah, it's a, a really good challenge for us coming back from Perth and, and taking them on. We were disappointed with our output over in the, over in the West and you know, I'm sure our guys are uh, looking forward to, to bouncing back and getting back on the winners list. Would you like to say that you guys don't have a fantastic record against the Bulldogs? Um, yeah, you know, I don't sort of look into sort of history too much, you know, past performances. Uh, we beat them convincingly last year, I think the m most recent outing. Um, we just believe that if we're going to become the team we want to become, you know, history doesn't doesn't mean a thing. You know, we'll beat them when we have to beat them, and um, you know that's what we're hoping to be able to do this weekend. There's a lot of talk yesterday about Jack Revolt's form slump and how he's got you know the hand of coaches to help him out with certain things. I mean, Drew Preachy isn't, isn't playing that great at the moment, just in terms of his importance to your team and how valuable he is. Where's he at with his footy at the moment? And have you been having the worst team, or has Brad had a quiet meeting on the side just to say, just to keep it up? Look, he, he you know. Whether Brad's had a quiet word with him, I'm not too sure, but um, Drew's such a professional that you know that uh, he's going to do everything to turn his form around. And, you know, perhaps he hasn't been, you know, taking the marks that we all expect him to take and, and um, hit the scoreboard as much as we'd like. But, you know, there was a game there where he had actually qu a quiet game, but we as a coaching staff were really pleased with what he did um, from a whole team perspective, the amount of opportunities he created for his teammates, um, whether it was creating a contest or just creating space. Um, so sometimes we look at um, key forwards and their output has to be marks and, and uh, hitting the scoreboard, but there's also a lot of other things they do that uh, perhaps go unnoticed. And, and Drew knows he's not in the best of form, but he'll keep working hard to turn that around, you know, because he is a pro. Darren, the dogs have got two days extra break getting into this game. You guys coming back from Perth? Any concerns there? Uh, no, no concerns. You know, we've 
you know, recovered the players really well. Um, we stayed over in Perth. We didn't fly back so that the guys could get a good night's sleep on Sunday night. Um, we got up, did a really good recovery at Trinity Grammar over in Perth and then flew back and got back into Melbourne about 7 o'clock on, on uh, Monday night. Um, the players had yesterday off to do uh, recovery and, and get their sore spots looked at. Um, so we think they will recover really well and um, yeah, it should be physically right to go. How do you assess uh, Brian Lane's form given that Drew played a game earlier in the year? Yeah, look, we've got match committee uh, tomorrow, um, so we'll discuss the team, um, any possible changes, and also, um, you know, any tactics that we want to try to employ against the Bulldogs tomorrow. But, um, yeah, at this stage, probably haven't looked into it too much, but, you know, Brian Lake, he did an extremely good job on Travis Cloak, I'll give him that. So um, we're going to make sure that he has his hands full at some stage. Uh, Goldie's done everything he possibly could, you know, to um, force his way back into the team. So, um, you know, oh, as I said, we've got match committee tomorrow, but, um, you know, that's all we could ask from him. He's putting us as a match committee under pressure to pick him. And we, as a match committee, still believe that uh, the Petri, McIntosh, Goldstein thing can work. Worked uh, against Geelong, um, and we think it can work again. So just one. Uh, Nathan, Nathan Grimer, Lock, Lockie Hanson, how close are those guys to getting back to the team? Yeah, Nathan Grimer played his best game um, for the year in the VFL, uh, having come back from a, you know, six weeks out with injury. I think he's now had about three or four weeks back um, playing in the VFL and he had his, had his best game. And, um, and Lockie played really well as, uh, also. So, you know, it's a good situation for, uh, for us to be in. You know, we've got a healthy list and um, we've got some players who are in the VFL really pushing hard for senior selection. So, you know, the senior group, it's, uh, it's good to be able to put them under pressure because hopefully it uh, translates into a strong performance on, um, on Sunday.